How quick can you make these grilled kofta sandwiches? 15 minutes? 20? Well, they only take 10 and you're about to get obsessed with this delicious recipe. To make these kofta sandwiches, which are called arois, you first put together a flavorful kofta mix, stuff it into some pita bread and then grill it until the meat is cooked through. That's literally it, a handheld kofta sandwich cooked inside this bread so it's ultra moist. To turn minced meat into kofta, you need to mix it with grated onions, which you get by grating onions. When I'm in a rush, I use a food processor instead of a grater, which does the same thing but 10 times quicker. For this recipe, you need one medium or two small onions, and you also need 30 grams of fresh parsley. Because I'm going to process these, I just gave everything a rough chop, but if you're doing this by hand, you'll have to finely mince the parsley. So onions and parsley went into the food processor with three cloves of garlic. Those need to be processed for about one minute until you are left with this. The mixture should be very finely minced, very oniony, and bring a literal tear to your eyes. Before you go any further, you must strain this onion mixture because this stuff is really watery and water makes your kofta soggy. Here's a batch of freshly grated onion and even without squeezing it, it's just soaking wet. To prevent this, place your onions in a strainer and squeeze out about 90% of their liquid. Being the genius that I am, I forgot to strain this onion mixture, but at least I can demonstrate how to fix wet kofta. So after straining your onions, add the seasonings so they get evenly spread. Start by adding one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baharat or seven spice, and a quarter each of black pepper and cayenne pepper. Add an eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon, and those spices together will give you a very typical Lebanese kofta. This is a very flexible dish though, so you can easily replace the spices with whatever spice mix you're currently obsessed with. After the spices, add one to two tablespoons of olive oil, depending upon the fat content of your meat, and then add one and a half tablespoons of pomegranate molasses. Quick tip, pomegranate molasses is sticky. If you reuse an oily measuring spoon, it will just slide out versus using a clean one where it will stick to the spoon. Now mix those ingredients together and you'll have a well-seasoned onion mixture. As you can see, it's quite watery, which is all of the water that I should have removed earlier, but didn't. There's no going back though, so let's add in the meat. For this recipe, you need 500 grams of minced meat. I'm gonna use 250 grams of beef and 250 grams of lamb, but you can use any combination you want. The key thing is that the meat should be finely minced so it has a play doughy texture, and you should have about 20 to 30% fat overall. With the meats added, mix them into the onions and knead it all together for about two to three minutes. The mixture should get sticky and homogenous, and when it looks pretty uniform like this, you can stop mixing. Now it's clear that my mixture is way too wet, and it's because I didn't strain the onions. Good thing it's fixable. To fix this, we need to remove the excess liquid. I placed some kitchen towels into a strainer, then added the kofta mix. Let this sit for five minutes or apply some pressure to speed it up. Now remember the wetness is totally avoidable if you squeeze the liquid from the onions at the start. Here's all the liquid that came out of the meat and that probably includes a good bit of flavor, but at least the kofta has the right texture now. It should be pliable and squishable into any form and hold its shape well. Now let's turn this mix into arois. Get yourself some thin pita breads like these or make some using my recipe. Slice the bread into quarters or leave it whole depending upon your preference and then pull apart the two layers of bread. The fresher your bread is, the easier this will be, but if you find that it's just not coming apart, microwave the bread for 10 seconds to make it easier. Once you have a pile like this, all that's left is to stuff the bread with a thin layer of kofta. Spread the meat out so it goes from edge to edge and press it into an even thickness all around. Then you just repeat that until all of the kofta is used up. I also made some exaggeratedly thick arroyas for my thumbnails and b-roll, which are like the juicier cousin of these traditional thin ones. The final step before grilling these is to brush both sides of the bread and vegetable oil and then place a pan on the stove. I'm using a grill pan to get some nice grill marks on the sandwiches, but you can also cook them in the oven or over a barbecue. Heat the pan over medium heat and then add in a couple of pieces. Press them down and cook them until they start to leak juices, then flip them over and cook them a little more. Once they're nice and golden on both sides, I like to flip and crisp them up for another 30 seconds, then remove them and set them aside. Here's what they should look like when done. And for the doubters here who think the meat is still raw, this is what it looks like. The meat is perfectly cooked and the crispy bread is soaked in all of the meat juices. The thicker ones take a bit longer to cook, but the extra time is worth it for one of the juiciest koftas you'll ever experience. To serve, I've put together a red onion and parsley salad, which you can get from this video. And I've also got a tahini sauce for dipping. You can also drizzle this with some pomegranate molasses to make it even more decadent. Whichever option you choose to make, I'm certain you'll be making these over and over again. But if you crave sandwiches of a different style, how about you make the shawarma instead?